Welcome to the Breakup Recovery Podcasts by your host, Barbara Stevens. Discover the wisdom and remarkable insights of Barbara Stevens, breakup recovery mentor, author, and public speaker. Barbara offers programs and solutions for any breakup so you can turn your life around, create lasting changes for the better, and embrace life again. Hello and welcome to Breakup Recovery Podcast. I'm Barbara Stevens, your host. This is episode number 055, the best of Breakup Recovery Podcast for the past year. I can't believe it's been a year already since the first episode of Breakup Recovery was published on iTunes. I started with the who, what and why. And in this first episode, I wanted to let you know who I was, what I do, why I do what I'm doing, and what I offer as a breakup recovery mentor. I also wanted to get across what breakup recovery podcasts will be all about, how often you can listen to them, and their duration. When I recently listened to this episode, I can say that I feel that I have remained faithful to my intentions, in that I want to make sure I am giving you valuable information that is honest and straightforward. I want to give you key skills, strategies and tools that you can take away and implement them in your lives now and start to make a difference in the way you think and act now. I am committed to assisting you when you are going through a breakup, when you are feeling lost and alone and don't know where to turn. I want you to regain your self-confidence. I want you to rebuild your life through empowering and inspiring changes to enrich your life for the better. In this one-year anniversary episode, I have looked at a number of downloads for each episode over the past 12 months and gathered the top five downloaded episodes and drawn from them the important information, strategies, skills and techniques to share in this Best of Breakup Recovery for the past year. I also have a free giveaway that I will mention at the end of this podcast, so stay tuned to the very end to get the details on how you can get my free giveaway. When I compiled the top five episodes for the year, I didn't include the very first one, as I feel that this episode will always be the top downloaded one, as people listen to it to gain some understanding of what breakup recovery is all about. I'm going to give you a brief overview of each of the five most downloaded episodes and feel free to go back and listen to them in full on iTunes. So let's start with the fifth most downloaded breakup recovery episode and that would be episode number 031. Three things to remember if your partner ends the relationship. In this episode, I talked about how it can be so painful for you when your relationship ends and you don't want it to, or if you had no idea that your partner was feeling in a way that they wanted to end the partnership. You may have been in a relationship with your ex for a long time or a relatively short time. It probably doesn't really matter the length of time. The feelings can still be the same. You spend a lot of time asking yourself questions like, why did your ex-partner break up with you? What did you do wrong? Were you not good enough? Are you worthy? Are you a good person? What could have you done to change the breakup? What could have you said or asked so that they would change their mind? Then the focus switches from you to them. You may start to blame the other person, thinking of all the things that they have said or didn't say all the things they did or didn't do that could have maintained the relationship. You start to think of all the other signs that maybe you have missed. The first thing to remember is that it's not all your fault. Nothing good comes from thinking it's all your fault that the relationship is over, even if your ex-partner has told this to you. There are two people in a relationship and it takes two people to make it work. It can take just one of those people to end it. It can be so easy to have a good guy and a bad guy in a breakup. 
it's better to be the good guy, right? We often want to place blame when things don't work out and what is better for you to blame the other person. It helps to protect you from the hurt you are feeling. The second thing to remember is to let them leave. Consider these questions if you still think you want to be in a relationship with your ex-partner. Do you really want to be in a relationship with someone who has already left emotionally? Do you want to make someone stay or make them feel guilty enough to stay? They are no longer truly invested in you, invested in making the relationship work. They no longer value you enough. They are no longer going to be truly there for you. So why would you want to be in a relationship with this person? The third thing to remember is you are a worthy person. Stop running negative internal chatter, that inner critic that tells you that you are not good enough, you're a failure and your life is a disaster. Don't beat yourself up. This is part of life and breakups happen to so many people. There is not much use in reliving the past, agonising over what you did or didn't do, reliving the heartache. The fourth most downloaded breakup episode is number 040, How to Ditch Codependency Habits. The ending of a relationship is often a time for reflection. Often habits and behaviours come to the surface as we look at the part we played in the breakup and why it all happened the way it did. A recognition of what you have been allowing to happen in your relationship hits you right in the eye. There has been a lot written about codependency and the word codependent gets used a lot. So I'm going to ask a series of questions and if you answer yes to any of them, it might be an indication that you were in fact in or have been in a codependent relationship. Do you find yourself making lots of sacrifices for your partner's happiness? putting their needs before your own. Do you find that you are always seeking approval from your partner? Do you feel that you cannot live or exist without your partner and that you need your partner to be happy in life? There is no one else that can fill that role. Did you give unconditional support to your partner at the expense of your emotional, mental and physical health? So if any of these questions I have asked resulted in a yes for you, then it is possible that you were in a codependent relationship. The first step is to acknowledge and identify your codependent behaviour or behaviours. Then educate yourself so that you understand them in order to change and develop new behaviours and habits. This may include setting clear boundaries and limits not only for the physical things in life like your personal space, your possessions, etc., but also your feelings, your thoughts, your values and your needs. And it's okay to say no. Implementing these changes can involve taking risks and venturing outside your comfort zone, but your past is your past and your future is in your hands. The third most downloaded breakup recovery episode is number 026, Three Ways to Stop Overthinking Your Breakup. This episode is all about me wanting you to understand the implications if you are overthinking everything about your breakup, the mental and physical effects this process has and how overthinking is counterproductive to your well-being. You can get stuck inside your own head. It feels like there's no way out. You're overanalyzing your breakup, regretting actions you took, worrying about your future, pondering the could-ofs, would-ofs and should-ofs, replaying scenes from the breakup and feeding the negative self-talk so it becomes part of your everyday life. So do you overanalyze your problems and replay them over and over again in your mind? Are you doing this so much that you are having difficulty even making a decision? 
This behavior can lead to increased anxiety levels, stress, and worry. So how do you stop negative post-breakup thoughts and these feelings taking over your life? The first way I offered was to accept that you are an overthinker. If you're still wondering if you are overthinking, not just with your relationship breakup, but with other things in your life, here are a few signs you may be an overthinker in general. Do you think more than you do? You think so much you actually don't do anything. Do you find it difficult in letting things go? What I mean by this is, are you continuing to think about it even after you believe you've already let it go? Do you want to know all the whys to a problem? Do you want to get everything right? Are you a perfectionist? Do you always want to get all your ducks in a row before you attempt the solution? The second way to stop overthinking your breakup is to challenge your beliefs. So challenge your thoughts and beliefs. Are they true? And adding any value to your current situation. When you have these thoughts, I would like you to ask some of these questions. What's the evidence that the thought is true? Is there a more positive, realistic way of looking at the situation? Is the thought helpful? What would I say to a friend who has had this worry or thought? The third and last tip I offered was to stop trying to control all your situations. Surrender does not mean giving up. It just means you are willing to go with the flow of the current instead of trying to swim against it and getting repeatedly bashed into the rocks. Surrender the control is a form of release and a form of peace because it means you are willing to trust that everything will work out as it's supposed to. The second most downloaded breakup recovery episode is number 042, three ways that will help you to cope after your breakup. Coping after a relationship breakup is certainly not easy, but there is life after your breakup, and it can be a fulfilling one. In this podcast, I offered three ways you can implement straight away to boost your chance of coping and moving forward after your breakup. The first way was to stop and listen to your internal chatter. What are you telling yourself about your breakup, about your ex-partner, about the life you think you have ahead of you? If left unchecked, this internal chatter can spiral out of control and take over your everyday life, bringing you down and continually leaving you in a state of depressive thoughts with no way out. If you think this could be you, ask yourself these questions. Are you worrying about problems that are beyond your control? Are you reenacting the scenes from your breakup? Are you trying to change the stories and events that have already happened? Is there a continuous conversation that you are having in your head about all the things that could go wrong in your future? The second way to help you to cope after your breakup is to give yourself a break. This reminds me of a quote I read about this subject. Stop beating yourself up. You are a work in progress, which means you get there a little at a time, not all at once. The third way to help you cope after your breakup is to take back the control and choose to move forward. Some days it feels like you are taking one step forward and two steps back. Other days you don't even know what forward looks or even feels like. But if you want to move forward, you have to give up and let go of the things that are weighing you down. You have to take back the control over your life and not let others or situations relating to the breakup hold you back. So take control of your life post-divorce. Decide what you want your life to look like and start taking the necessary steps to get there. If you choose to do nothing, then nothing will change. And I feel that I need a drum roll for this one. And coming in at number one 
of the most downloaded breakup recovery episode is 001, Gaining Control. I'm not surprised that this particular episode was the most downloaded one this year. This episode is all about the blame game, how blaming others, especially if you are blaming your ex-partner all the time about your relationship breakdown, how this can turn you into a negative person. And when you stay in this negativity, it puts you in victim mode. Playing the victim affects you on a physical and mental level. When things go wrong in a relationship, it is very easy to blame the other person. It's so much easier to see faults in your ex-partner and point the finger and accuse them of creating barriers and difficulties so that separation was inevitable. To admit blame is almost like admitting you are the failure. You are the one at fault for the collapse of the relationship. It is natural to not want to admit to this. Often we don't want to believe we are our own source of pain. Blaming also protects us from feeling bad about ourselves at the expense of the other partner. It helps you to cover up feeling guilty and ashamed for the end of your relationship. You defend your self-esteem by making your ex-partner responsible for the breakdown of the relationship. It inflates your ego I'm right, they are wrong. Your ex-partner becomes a scapegoat for any personal failure you may be feeling. I talked about writing some of the blame thoughts you are having about your ex-partner and then reframing those thoughts into a positive and more helpful one. Blaming others for your unhappiness is like holding them responsible for your hardship and troubles. How can you begin to feel happy again when you are in this place? When you stop the blame game, you shift the focus from the other person and inwards to yourself. And working on yourself is the only way you are going to be able to move forward. I shared a quote from Urquhart Tolle. Whenever something negative happens to you, there is a deep lesson concealed within it. Dropping the blame game allows the possibility for growth and creates a path for more positive results. Forget blame and focus on where to go from here. I hope you enjoyed listening to the recaps of the five most downloaded episodes for this past year. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, I'm not going to give you my normal spiel at the end of this episode. I just want to give back to the breakup recovery community that have supported me in this journey over the past year. I want to give away my book, You'll Be Okay, 12 Inspirational Steps, 12 Inspirational Stories, to the first five people that leave a review for Breakup Recovery Podcast on iTunes. In my book, You'll Be Okay, the 12 Inspirational Steps provide easy and practical techniques to accelerate the recovery process. In a collection of 12 inspirational stories, you will read moving and personal accounts of love and loss, find inspiration, learnings and strength from real stories shared by real people. Now to do this, you have to go into iTunes and search Break Up Recovery and click on the podcast. At the top of the page, you'll see the Break Up Recovery logo. And to the right and under the words Breakup Recovery Podcast, Barbara Stevens, Breakups, Separations, Divorce, etc., there are some headings, Details, Ratings and Reviews. Click on the Ratings and Reviews and leave a review. And the first five people to do that and email me or send me a message on my Facebook page, I will send you a free copy of my book. I look forward to reading the reviews and sending you my book. I would also like to say thank you for your support, the messages, the connections and the number of downloads Breakup Recovery Podcast gets each week. I love doing what I do. I love helping people get back on track after their breakups. I look forward to bringing you more valuable content in the next 12 months. As usual, I love hearing your feedback on the episodes and the subjects you want me to cover. So keep those coming in via my website www.barbarastevens.com.au
or my Facebook page, Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor. And the last thing I'd like to say is, be gentle in yourself. You deserve happiness. If you would like to hear previous Breakup Recovery podcasts, visit barbarastevens.com.au. Connect with Barbara Stevens on social media with Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor on Facebook and at You'll Be Okay on Twitter. Read further blogs, view webinar replays, and download your free ebook, Three Easy Steps to Surviving Your Breakup, and much more at barbarastevens.com.au. 